Mr. Robinson, if you could do the blessing for us. All right. Our dear Heavenly Father, O Lord, we are here to fulfill the business for which those members of our city council have been chosen and elected. And we ask that all things be done uh, in unity of understanding and we also know that those who are in the service of their fellow men uh, are also in the service of our Creator. And we thank Thee that it is so. And we remember the many who serve, who take care of our uh, necessities, our comforts, our conveniences, and who in, in times of great need uh, are out also taking care of the destruction or the uh, failure of some of the aspects of, of our city operation. We thank Thee, Lord for the comforts and we know that we are a blessed people and we are we are fortunate for all of the conveniences and for all of the services that we so enjoy and this we do in the name of Jesus our everlasting Savior Amen, Amen. <laughs> Stafford and, and 
2011, I had visited with the mayor and KDOT, the Aviation Division of the Kansas Department of Transportation, has an airport division. And they have around 5300000 to spend on airports every year. And Stafford does not qualify for the federal funding with the FAA funding. When you buy an airline ticket, you pay a tax on the tickets. We pay 30 cents a gallon on ad gas to build this fund. But it only helps commercial airports like Great Bend, Pratt, and some of the other larger airports. And I've talked to the office of Kansas City. They have five state regions, and they will not fund Stafford County for an airport. We're too close to Pratt and Great Bend. But that's where the KDOT Aviation steps in. For over 10 years, they've helped airports that don't qualify for the federal funding. And it's a 90-10 grant on the work. Now, the feasibility study, this is what they did for us at Stafford in 2011. They awarded $40,000 to an engineering firm, and they studied what Stafford had and what the potential was. And the city of Stafford paid $2,000, 5% of that cost. But if you're going to build an airport, it's a 90-10 grant, and they pay for the purchase of land, and they're not as restrictive as the feds are. You can go ahead and get your local contractor, the county can be hired to do the work on the runway. But we're limited at Stafford to 2,500-foot runway, and the old 50 on the north and the new 50 on the south. And in order to operate any airplane that amounts to anything nowadays, it requires at least a 3,200 foot runway. Life Team flies the King Air 90 Air Ambulance. Right now, where the county is being served great by the helicopter. But you get an icy night, it's windy, the helicopter won't fly. But the King Air will fly if you can't see across the road. And Life Team will operate on a 3,200 foot runway if they're light low on fuel, and Eagle Med likes to have 3,500 and that's if they're just carrying enough fuel to get here from Wichita and back to Wichita. And we're looking at a 5,000 foot runway just for the safety, because the insurance companies like 5,000 feet. They like to be able to get to 160 mile an hour, slam on the brakes and stop the jet before it goes off the end of the runway, and that's generally 5,000 feet. And we would have to move Old 50 Highway if we stay where they are. And I'm not a member of the airport board or the council or anything. I'm just an aviation that pushed this thing away. And we're at the point now where I visited the county commissioners. And at last council meeting at Stafford, they want to go ahead with the project, but they want to stay where they are. And they're going to approach the county about some funding, but I think that the city of St. John and all the citizens of the county should be involved in this planning. Because to me, it should be more centrally located. Right now, it's close to the, would be close to the hospital. But uh, Stafford, uh, you know, Stafford County is a pretty good-sized county, and to spend a million dollars to relocate. US 50, which the state would fund a lot of that. You could buy a site that would be more adaptable to an airport without the obstructions. You have a pretty good sized power line a half a mile south of the runway. But to go out and find a new site, and again the state would fund 90% of the land purchase. And they want every county in Kansas to have a hard service run. We're one of the few counties that do not have that. But they do fund privately owned airports if you keep it open to the public for 10 years. So it's something you might want to think about. And if you see some meetings coming up, you might want to have somebody go to the meetings and put your two cents in for St. John. <coughs> and, uh, so the state of Kansas doesn't. There's three people in that office to deal with. They're not favoring either town. They just want to get an airport built. And that's the only problem. That's what I'm involved with, because I want to be able to fly 
the airport was started over there and dedicated in November 6th, 1946. It served well for all this time. The Wales Aircraft at Hutchinson now will not fly the airplanes in and out of there because of the insurance requirements and the runway's getting so rough. If you just take your car, pick up, and drive down at some time, you wonder how to fly off. But I'm meeting with the commissioners in the morning to talk about it again. And, uh, right now, the funding cycle is that's talking about 2014. That's the year they're in right now. That's the money they're spending this year to help airports. And if you get an application for next year, it has to be in by next September, first of next. They've got all this time to plan. And they were out here the other day in Topeka and looked the area over, so they want to work with us. So. And it doesn't have to be built in one year. You can buy the land do the dirt work and come in a year later and do the concrete. But the state does it very efficiently. They built Hill City's airport for a million and a half dollars. It's a 5,000 foot runway just like that. Where if the feds were doing it, it'd be three and a half million dollars to build the same airport. But it's just your consideration if you be interested in uh, Economic development, and then in the future, if you get another attorney, they might want to fly. I was in a doctor's office this afternoon, and you always wonder why they're late getting to your little sweat box when you're waiting. For them. We talked airplanes for an hour in there just because it's common ground. You never know what the person does, but the aviation is a real common denominator, and we do did have a doctor flying in this Stafford flight right there. And it's just something to look at in development. With the state 90 10 grand, it's pretty hard to go wrong with that. And I thank you for your time. And there's a number in there if you want to call or call me sometime. Why? We'll sure try to answer your questions. Thank you for the information. You bet. Thank you. Thank you. I'm here to uh, apologize to the council for the mistake I made, and I'm very aware of what I did. And I know it's an embarrassment to the city, and I said I'm just here to make my apology. And I have a request that when this is all taken care of, you would give me a second chance at my job. We appreciate you coming in and apologizing. All right, thank you. 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 Thank Insurance contact and Andrea Huffman is here from the Crossing the Shield. She's our new rep in this area. If you recall, Stephanie Buckman used to come. This is our new Stephanie. She's Andrea. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Jonah has asked me to come down um, to talk to you guys a little bit about the policy that you have today um, and also show you an option of. Potential plan to review um, if you guys did decide to make some changes and what those how those changes would impact um, the future policy um, and being grandfathered versus um, becoming non grandfathered and choosing the policy that I've brought here to to show you um, if you open up the brochure the the plan features. Um, this is the plan that you guys currently have in place today. It is a grandfathered plan. Um, it has the $500 deductible per person um, after the deductible. Uh, Blue Cross pays 80% of the allowed charges. The other 20% would be the employee's responsibility until they reach their co-insurance maximum. 
um, coinsurance maximum is $1,500 per person or $3,000 per family. Once the deductible and the coinsurance is met, um, then those services that are applicable to that um, then are paid at 100% of the allowed charge for the remainder of the benefit period. It also has a $25 office visit copay. Those are unlimited. Um, it also has a prescription drug copay, um, $15 if it's a generic drug, unless the cost of the prescription is less, $30 for brand name drugs, $45 for the non-formulary products. Um, we did see a little less than a 3% increase in premiums this year. The premiums are listed on the right-hand side of the brochure. Um, it does break it down into the classifications, employee, um, employee, child, employee, spouse, and family. So if we were to leave everything the way it was today and not change anything as far as benefits um, or the amount um, that is contributed to the policy uh, by more than 5%, um, these would be what the rates would be and the policy would remain the same. Any questions on that portion of it? On the 5%, is that 5% of the premium amount or is it? The, the, the guidelines that are set is you have to go back to what you were paying as of March 23rd of 2010. And you cannot hand down more than 5% of what you were paying at that time over the lifetime of the policy. So, for example, if you are paying 100% of the employee-only premium as of that date, you would only be able to hand down 5% so you could, you could pay 95%. Um, but nothing more than that over the lifetime of the policy. So it's not 5% a year, um, which has been a misinterpretation. Um, it is 5% total. Okay, and that's 5% of the premium that the city was paying as of March, March 23rd. 2010. That is correct. Okay. So if you were paying a dollar amount, you would have to convert that to the percentage and then go off of the percentage. So that, that is what we, we currently have in place today. What I have brought you um, is one of our non-grandfathered plans. Um, this plan is um, the Elite Choice. Um, it is the plat Platinum Level Plan. Um, all of the non-grandfathered policies have to fit into one of the metallic levels. This plan um, is the closest to what you guys currently have today. Um, there's not really a way to honestly compare apples to apples because the policies require different things. Platinum level plan is designed to pay 90% of the total health insurance cost for a standard population. How this plan is designed, it does not have an upfront deductible. It does have a coinsurance. So from day one, Blue Cross Blue Shield will pay 50% of the allowed charges. The other 50% would be the employee's responsibility until they met their, their out-of-pocket maximum. And the out-of-pocket maximum, if you look down here, um, or annual out-of-pocket maximum, is $1,150 per person. It doubles for the family. There are a lot of differences in what you have today and what this plan offers. Um, today, you do not have a annual out-of-pocket maximum. You have your deductible and your coinsurance, but once that's met, if you go to the doctor's office and you have an office visit, you're going to pay your office visit copay. Those continue to go on, and your prescription copays are the same way. So those today do not accumulate to a total out of pocket maximum. This plan, um, whether it's a doctor's visit, a prescription drug, um, an inpatient hospitalization, it's 50% coverage until the employee meets the annual out-of-pocket maximum. Once that out-of-pocket maximum is met for the year, Blue Cross Blue Shield will pay 100% of the allowed charges on everything. Any questions on that? And this is subject to health care reform rules, correct? That is correct. That is correct. And when we need to have a decision made by? <coughs> Our renewal date is January 1, and so they need 
they like to have it by December 1, correct? Ideally, yes. Um, and that's just administratively so that if, if we do need to make changes, we can get all the paperwork processed and, and get that in place prior to your effective date so you have the right cards in your hands. So, so the city's, there's a dollar's worth of difference, basically? Is that, is that the way I'm taking that or what? There, the, What's key on the non-grandfather policies today, how, you're, how, you're, how we design your rates or, or come up with your rate is we look at the average age of your group and average gender factors. We also look at the amount of premiums that comes in from your business versus what we pay out in claims. We look at the size of the group and then we look at um, what we call the health pool, which is um, statewide medical cost, medical trends. Um, it is a shared expense by all of our enrolled Blue Cross Blue Shield groups. That's running about 5% this year, um, which is where you're seeing um, your, I think it's 25 or 2.7% increase. Um, so everything that you have control over, you're doing quite well. On the non-grandfather policy, though, um, the, the rating structure is completely different than what you know today. Um, Healthcare reform has said there are two factors that we can take into consideration when we're building your rate. Um, what we look at is where the business is located within the state of Kansas. The state is divided into seven sections. And so we look at where the business is located. And then we look at each individual's age. That would include all dependents. And that's what builds your overall rate. So for example, if you have a family policy, the employee is going to have their own rate based off of their age. Their spouse will have their own rate. And then any children under the age of 19, the three eldest children, will have their own individual rate. There's more than three children that are under the age of 19. Those individuals are considered free. In the same respect, if you do have any children over the age of 19, because we do cover them till the age of 26, they also will have their own rate. And then those collectively will be your family rate. So the rating structure is very much different than what you guys know today. So, so what you see on this... What's, what's that dollar amount represent then? I mean, I, I, know this, it's, I know it's these two put together mm -hmm. to come up with that dollar amount, but That's how does correct. it compare to so our, our current plan an and an our city child and our person. city contribution? You can't compare them. They're, they're not, I mean, because... Because each, each... An employee child plan for one employee is going to be different than an employee child for another. Well, I understand that, but... So, then why do we have dollar amounts here if we if they're no good? Well, these these are your enrolled individuals currently on the plan. Okay. So, for example, um, applicant C on the form is an employee only coverage. Mm -hmm. So you would compare this one eighty two sixty six. You guys with me? Mm -hmm. To the employee only rate over on your brochure. Okay. Okay. Which would be the five zero three ten. Good. That's the best representation that I can give you because how we look at you today is we're averaging everything together. So whether you are a 50-year-old female that is on a single policy or a 22-year-old male that's a single policy, you have the same rate today. Anyone that's enrolled in an employee-only coverage has the same rate. Anyone that's enrolled in a family coverage has the same rate today. In tomorrow's world, that if you choose a non-grandfathered plan, the rating is completely different, and what you see on this on this proposal is how your group of employees, how their rates would come out. So they are, you can see, all over the board. Some families are paying much more than other, you know, other families, depending on how many dependents they have. And so as the work and the ages, the the premiums will rise each year. There, um, and the age banding is is every year. Um, until you reach the age of 65. So there's no way to to tell you um, if you were to go to the non-grandfathered plan, there's no way for me to tell you 
what you could potentially be looking at in premiums in five years uh, because the benefits could change. Uh, because whatever health care reform passes as far as regulations, if you are non grandfathered, you are required to comply with. So if they pass down any additional benefits or new benefits at your anniversary each year, regardless of the impact on premiums, you'll be required to put those in your policy. The plan you have today, I can give you more of a, I can tell you exactly what we're going to look at every single year. I don't know what the health pool is going to do each year from year to year. Um, right now, this year it's 5%. Um, it's, you know, it could be 7%, it could be 8%, but what I can tell you is we're going to look at the average age of your group and gender factors. We're going to look at the amount of premiums that you guys are paying into us versus the amount of claims that we're paying out on. We're going to continue to look at the size of your group and then what the health pool is doing. So that I can I can guarantee you that is how you'll be evaluated on the grandfather policy. All right, your group grand total that you have on your non grandfather policy mm -hmm. is from the applicants that we have today, correct? That is correct. Okay. So what would the group grand total be under this policy today? I believe or for that same period. I believe John has a, a spreadsheet for left. It says current and there should be an annual. Is this is this city only contribution here? Or is that yeah, that's city that's and employee? That is the total premium that we will bill you for. So, I mean, that's city. Looking at it, there, you're saying today it's seventeen thousand seven hundred thirty-four dollars for the group grand total. Yeah. And it, if we look at the same group under the ungrandfathered, we're looking at eleven thousand. No. Correct. Eleven thousand five hundred. Okay, I put the spreadsheet together. Okay, what you're looking at there is that 17,000 is what the employee only plan is costing us for three employees for a year. And then we pay 24,000 for two employee child plans for a year and so on for a total of 136,930.08. Okay, that's what health insurance is currently costing us. So you would have and to under the ungrandfathered under the ungrandfathered plan, the annual amount would be one hundred and sixteen thousand. You go down to the bottom on the left side, where it says non grandfathered. The annual amount is one hundred and sixteen thousand eight eighty seven sixty eight. So we are looking at a potential savings to the city of twenty three thousand. Twenty three thousand, mm -hmm. almost twenty four. Yeah. Okay. For this year. Right. And, of, and of course, you know, as you know, individuals come onto the plan, you know, that could change because of the different rating structure. Um, the non grandfathered plans um, also, one of the items that was removed from the contracts was that routine eye exams for adults under the non grandfathered plans will no longer be covered. Today they're covered under a $25 office visit copay on the current plan. Uh, so if, if you were to choose the other plan, uh, that is one benefit that would be going away. Uh, it would be an out-of-pocket expense. And it doesn't accumulate to the coinsurance out-of-pocket because it's considered not a covered service. And we can't, or can we, can you change anything on this policy and keep it from being a non-grandfather? According say, to the say law, I want to say we wanted to raise the deductibles or whatever. Does yeah. that change it to a non grandfather? Yes, it does. And if you were to change it to a non grandfather, the option I'm showing you is the closest to what right. we've got. Um, you, you can't, when we looked at our plans and what we were able to do, it, it honestly was was nothing without losing that non grandfather or without losing that grandfathered status. You can't change your deductible. Um, your co-insurance levels from the 80-20 to a 50-50, for example. Um, you couldn't increase your co-pays from 25 to 35 um, or, or the contribution, as we discussed earlier, by more than 5%. If any one of those things occurs throughout the year, we would have to take you to a non-grandfathered option, thus being compliant with the health care reform.
kind of saying the same thing, but oh, yeah. I just put it again. I just to 90 percent you could do that but you couldn't go to to an 89 split or an 85 15 so long as it's it has to be based on what our rates were as of March 23rd 2010 so I'm sure they were lower than what they are now that would be my guess you know I'm not real sure but what I will say is uh, actually it probably wasn't because I think this plan was grandfathered from when April was here. So, um, let me clarify something. If if the city is currently paying 95% of, of the premium, of the total premium, you would have to continue to pay 95% of whatever the premium is today. You could not waiver off of that by more than 5%. And when they made the motion, to when the employees first started paying anything on it. It was by dollar amount mm -hmm. per type of uh, policy, yeah, plan. And so they didn't do it by percentage. So as over the years it's you know fluctuated, one plan may not be exactly by, they're not all the exact same percentage. It's by dollar amount. So that you have to convert that yeah. to whatever percentage you were paying at that time, and then whatever that percentage is, you'll need to make you'll need to maintain that percentage of the new rates. And that percentage is the same whether it's employee only or family or whatever. I think so, based on what I was looking at here. I didn't I didn't take a lot of time to dig into it. I was looking at it from a different perspective. Um, if my understanding is correct. The other thing, if we went to a non-grandfather plan, all bets were off. Basically, we could say the employees have to pick up 25% or 40% if that was what we chose to do. Um, and that wouldn't affect our ability to provide insurance coverage. That would is correct. be a non-grandfather plan and we wouldn't have to adhere to certain dollar limits that the grandfather plan makes us adhere to. That is correct. The contribution could change um, from year to year, and, and it wouldn't it wouldn't affect any any status that you have. The grandfather plans are the plans that require the contribution to remain within the five percent.
you like the potential savings of Julianne's bigger than you like the grandfather? Um, I don't know. To me, if we're going to, if we are even thinking about maybe possibly going on grandfather, I don't know why Blue Cross and Blue Shield is the only one we're looking at. There could be other cheaper options out there yet. I will say if we're going to look at doing that, we probably would need to wait and do it for 2015 because I don't think we have enough time to go out and get quotes from other companies at this point. John, can correct me if I'm wrong, but I, that would be really pushing it. Yeah, well, and when, um, what was the gal's name that came from Hutch with the brokerage firm? Mm -hmm. you know, they ended up looking at several different companies and they came back to Blue Cross. Yeah, they did. Cheap. But they were cheaper than what we were paying now. Well, but it wasn't going to be an, a grandfather deal, and at the time, nobody wanted to even worry about that. High deductible plan that, you know, with a small group, you know, it's kind of like self insuring. Right. And that's the one thing that when you were asking about comparing, if you looked at that sheet that has the applicant A, applicant whatever. If you look at applicant F and compare that to applicant C, those are both employee only plans. But you can see the difference there in the premium. Well, applicant G has a spouse on it. I'm looking, looking at applicant F and yeah. applicant C. Oh, F and C, I'm sorry. Employee only. Those are both employee-only plans, and you can see the difference in the premium there. Mm -hmm. And again, if you look at B and G, those are both applicant spouse, and there's a $400 difference in the premium there. So well, John's, G's got a bunch of dependents on it, too. Oh, sorry, missed that. So, Okay, is there any mandate that we have to go by, that we have to provide, pay for insurance for a family? I'd have to go back and pull the employee policy and look. I don't believe that there is. Um, I think that if we're going to look at making a drastic change like that, that we need to look at phasing it in over several years um, because we're talking a large financial burden for our employees to, to make a shift like that. I mean, if you look at what we're paying out a month for the premiums on an employee only, and you're going to go and take, less. and you're going to go and take, and only pay that amount towards a family premium. You're talking a big hunk of a person's paycheck every month, and we could potentially lose employees over it. So we need to be really careful about how we proceed and make sure that what we're doing is in the best interest of everybody. which is why I suggested that we might want to take some time and look it over and maybe formulate some ideas. Because this isn't one of those that we can just make a decision quickly and go with it. We need to take some time with it. have Jonna add it to the agenda for the next meeting and plan on trying to make a decision at that point. I'd say so. Okay. Before that meeting, can you also look up and tell us what our premiums were 
2010. In 2010 or whatever, so that we know what. What you really want to know is what the what the. Per I'll you find out exactly what you need to know on that. On so if you wanted to yeah, well, increase there's a certain the, dollar amount yeah. or a certain percentage of. Well, when I took it, it was just five percent of the total do of, of the dollars that we were then. in 2010. But and then that dollar not, amount could be changed on this, but not a direct percentage. It could be what I, what I understood it, and I will clarify it. But if um, say on a single plan they were paying three percent, that could be increased by five percent. Is that correct? I believe so. And if on <coughs> a employee spouse they were paying two percent, that could be increased by five percent. No, I took it different, but like I said, I'll, I'll clarify. I mean, the way I took it is you could, you could vary that no more than five percent. Right. Off the total amount. Off, their, off of what they're paying in 2010. So if they were, say it was 500, you know what I mean? Yeah, Just, I will have You take them that 5% and come what, up with a dollar amount, and it I wouldn't will, be 5% off today's premiums, probably. It may only be 3%, but it'd still be the same dollar amount. I'll call Debbie and have her do a worksheet okay. for us. And that way we'll know it's from them and it's been done That's fine. the way it's supposed to be. But I will make sure we get That's that. Fine. really never come to the council for um, approval on what to do with Jubilee. That's usually just been, it does its, it has its own fund, it's, it's non-budgeted, uh, it stays within its amounts and everything, but um, I felt like maybe this was something I needed to just get clarification with. Do you want me to try to get another nonprofit group to do it? Um, is there... <coughs> I mean, we had the VFW that started it. They passed it to the fire, fire auxiliary, um, and now they're ready to pass it on as well. Why does the fire auxiliary still want it, Mike? Do you know? We don't have enough people to do it. It seems like every year we get less and less people to help, and at two o'clock in the morning when five people are cleaning up, it. It's just too burnout. much. <laughs> After several years, burnout happens too. I mean, I think we had 14 people working last time, and it was, it's just not enough. Okay. It's the same thing the DFW wrote into. Yeah. I personally would like to see it, see if somebody else will do it. So you want me just to... Yeah, I mean, it keeps okay. a lot of people... I didn't know it. if you had any specific... Um, you know what you want, how you wanted me to go about doing it. If I have some people in mind that I think has a big enough group to do it, you want me to just go ahead and approach that? I think we ought to put out an out in the paper and say, you know, Girl Scouts. <laughs> that we're soliciting vendors for, or nonprofit vendors for the beer garden for Jubilee and, you know, if you're interested, let us know, and I mean, if we need to, we can do like a lottery draw or whatever, and it can rotate on an annual basis if we want to make it fair if we have enough interest. At least, okay. if anybody, I mean, if that sounds like a good idea to the council. Sounds like a good idea, right? I don't know what I mean. I don't think well, it's our responsibility to find a beer garden. I mean, well, they always approach us. This is why I was always. Well, we need to at least get the word out that we're yeah, 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 that we want somebody to approach us. Right. Yeah. If they don't know I'll, that I'll it's available, they don't need yeah. to approach us. Right. Okay. Um. Then going to do that. Excuse me. Okay. Just put it in the paper. Or well, that's the only you know, put it on the website, website and what? in the paper and put something on their door. Might yeah. have Adam put something on the PD's Facebook okay. page. I mean, obviously, it has to be an adult group, and only those over 21 can work in it. Um, they have to follow all the laws of the state for CMB. So, um, 
Mike said he could help us out with some of the details that they've acquired over the years, but um, they, whoever would be doing it, we have to know that they're going to be responsible to do it the right way. So, would the trailer be available for another nonprofit deal too, Mike? Do you know? I don't or know. do they have to? That would be something they have to talk to Stafford Fire Department about. That's actually the Stafford it's Stafford deal. Fire Department. Okay. I, I mean, I'm sure they probably wouldn't have a problem, but right. I can't say for okay. sure. Okay. Um, Would the fire department of Stafford be interested in putting it all over here? They actually helped out last year, didn't they? Yeah, we helped them out. So, I mean, I don't, I don't know. discussion on that item? Alright, item three. Okay, on a utility account, um, if you recall this summer we had um, some discussion about a place that some people were trying to move into town on and the deposit was extremely high. Um, and then later we passed an ordinance to bring that to not exceed $500. Right? Mm -hmm. In the meantime, before you pass this, the week before you pass this, the citizen signed a letter of guarantee for somebody who um, exceeded that. And now they have left and left the bill. So that letter of guarantee is um, quite a bit more than $500 because that particular um, premise had the big bills that we talked about. And um, I'm just checking to see if you would consider allowing them to be a guarantor for the 500 since you, you know, it was after, but um, had they waited a week, they would have only guaranteed the 500 instead of what they're going to end up paying. Well, I guess I have this. this. They knew what they were signing when they signed it. I mean, whether it was a week before or a year before, you know what I'm saying? Okay. To me, the guy understood, I mean, whoever it was understood what he was signing. Very well spoken. Okay. Very well spoken. And that's all I have. All right, John, real quickly, um, I got a comment from a, a person in a Sterling uh, regarding our website. And the comment was just something passed on to me, and they said that when a couple of people in Sterling tried to get onto the website to get information, it was a mess. That is a direct quote. So what was just within passing, and I tried to get a hold of them later in the day, but unfortunately I wasn't able to. So I'll try to find out a little bit more information. But do we know when we're going to get the website up and running? Yeah, they are really close, the okay. design part. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, we're not even meeting anymore on the content part. So. Okay. Um, but I'm curious to know, I mean, did you go out and look at it then? No, I haven't looked okay. at it yet, so. Because, I mean, on these computers, it mm -hmm. loads just fine, so. Well, the web website is um, stjohnkansas.com, uh, correct? Yes. If that's, I've looked on it, and I don't see what they're saying, um, but hmm. just passing that okay. on to you, let you know. Yeah. Well, and I had somebody refer me to stjohnkansas.net is still sitting out there somehow, and I don't know really. Hmm what to do with that. So that was many, many, many years ago. So I don't even know how that's even being, I think, don't you have to pay for that? I would assume yes. Address or whatever. But yeah, if you can find out what it is that's not loading right or whatever. Okay, I'll find out. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. No? Uh, first item I had was Ordinance 1024, the senior packet. I'll pass this around. Uh, the uh, Planning Commission met. Uh, all the letters were sent out to all property owners within 200 feet. And uh, the people that showed up was uh, Danny Smith and his wife. Uh, so, hearing their concerns, and uh, this is what the, the Planning Commission came up with. Uh, 
one of uh, one of them was I guess Kevin was there. I'm sorry, uh, Kevin was here also. Uh, the eyes and ears for what was being said. The uh, what was discussed was the, the six foot tall uh, vinyl fence that would be put in between the water plant and across the back of their property. Uh, there would be a 15 inch wide uh, mow strip underneath there uh, just to you know, keep mowers and trimmers and stuff from getting up to it. Uh, there was also a concern about uh, drainage as far as water coming the, the building sets up high enough and with the gutters and everything that runs off and in, in between the two properties there and uh, the contractor brought to the contractor's attention they did do some work uh, but it's still you know it, 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 more dirt work could be done but to hopefully make it work out after today while it was raining and it was puddling there probably wasn't going across our property but at some point a good heavy rain could uh, could, could uh, an issue and they felt strong enough about it to bring it up at the meeting. So to address that part of it, uh, you can look on the flip that the drawing, flip it over on the back side of it. There's the the, uh, the idea was to put uh, a basically a wall up, a barrier wall, 12 inches tall, uh, to keep any water from going onto their property and that wall would extend on out 10 feet past the corner of their property and then taper down to at the last five feet down to nothing so the water would basically anything that would come up against there would have to drain presumably hopefully we would drain to the north of the fish tree so uh, that were the that was the main concerns uh addressed Take it north. Where's it going? Just going to puddle up out there. Well, it does fall away. There is a it does drop off. I mean, it can it can be taken to the north fall far enough, and it should drop off. Right now, the natural drainage once you get out in that field, there is a low spot. After that, just out of the pool. And you know, I share a concern about fish street you know, during construction. The grass has been planted out there and it's coming out. So the dirt piles out there, we're going to get those all the way. As far as uh, anything else, Kevin, do you remember anything else that was really addressed? That, uh, oh, um, no, this is his main concern. Mosquitoes and everything else, it becomes an issue for them, and then we're back to the 
drilling board. I don't think it's going to be a. I think there's enough of an area. I mean, there's really not a you know, place it's, it's going to get out there. And I think it's just going to. Well, right, right north of their house is a very low area. And it's going to go out there. And I, I don't. I've never seen even before the, the water plant was built or their house built, even during you know heavier rains. I've never seen it really stand water. I'm not saying it hasn't. This is just basically going to keep the water from getting on things. All this is going to be. We still have to say, take, take the, the wall down, but do away with it. There's still the same issue as far as what we do with the water. So, so it just keeps it from going on again. It was looked at one point, you know, and, and they did share the concern about being farther north. The only thing I said to that was that the farther north right now is beside the, the building and the, the ground storage tank is pretty much beside. And the farther north you would have taken it, the more visible it would have been to them in their backyard. And there was a concern about the, the salt truck come and all that stuff. You know, and right now it's. It's out in front versus driving back alongside the building. And if the building was farther to the north, we'd be driving between them and, and they're getting to that. That have a lot more traffic. It's still going to have a. I still think they would have, uh, you know, been wanting to have some kind of a barrier there, fence or whatever. So. Just be carried over to 
there's a row of trees that start there, just a little ways past the end of that, and all they were requesting. So his house, oh, his house would be right there. Oh, it goes out past his house? Just a little. Yeah, that's probably not quite the scale. Yeah, it used to, used to be heavy trees there, and the heavy trees don't start till about here. Thick trees. So. This is a low spot over here, if I recall. So that water's going to come around here and go this way, correct? Right? It's going to go north and then drip, go back to the west. west. Yeah, right. I guarantee you it's lower right over there north of this house. I've seen the water come through. The when I drove across it earlier, about a couple weeks ago, it took four wheel drive to get through that spot. So. I mean, it's really not going to. Water we're picking up is off of the roof of the, the plant and what flows there. I mean, the, the water's. Already there. If I picked up some slopes on the, the uh, property ponds and stuff like that, the forest put it right up there. I don't know where else you go with the water. Well, actually, it's going to wind back on 9th Street or on 5th Street anyway. It's just going to move back to the west of ways and then it's going to come back. If, if, if it gets high enough, you know, sometimes fish street gets enough, it actually goes over there and goes out there, but, you know, comes comes from fish street and goes out in, into that area yeah. out there west of his house between the size more. It's not an ideal situation, like I say, out the All second marks this year. All in favor? All opposed? Motion carries 4-1. Okay. Uh, next item is the Christmas holiday schedule. Uh, the 24th is not a uh, day scheduled to be off. Council at their discretion can give that off as far as uh, hams, turkeys, whatever. That's what we've done in the past. So, so. Did you work today after Thanksgiving? No. We actually you don't work? take off uh, Columbus Day or Martin Luther King Day. <coughs> we just, for that Friday after Thanksgiving, they switch that out. It, it's actually in the personnel manual. So you just went off Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. You work Monday, Thursday, Friday. Mm -hmm. So moved. Second. All in favor? Motion carries five all. Thank you. Okay, as far as on the Super Tim's report, the only thing I have is uh, working on, still working on the 6th Street water project. The boring uh, M&D just got done last Thursday about noon on their last bore for us. And we already switched over one water service, so the, the main lines in, we still have to do the tie-ins on the end. Uh, we're spending as much time on it as we can, and things still coming up with our manpower and everything. We have to. You know, maybe work a half a day and take care of stuff, but uh, it is progressing. And rain day today, naturally, but uh, anyway, so it is coming along, and uh, so we'll get it done soon. Uh, the other one is number four. Uh, was uh, we're coming up on needing to order uh, salt for the nitrate plant. Uh, we've got our first delivery on the uh, 12th of July, and. We're down to where we need to get some in order within the next week or so. Uh, that was, you know, that's pretty much our peak time as far as where, you know, right now, water usage and everything is down, so this, this next batch will last you know, longer than that. Plus, we've learned from the original setup on the plant that uh, we can increase our run times on our fillers and everything now, so we're, we're, we're going to make, you know, it'll last longer than this first, first batch. What's our dollar figure? Uh, it's the same price as our original. It's uh, three thousand two hundred and seventy-nine dollars and seventy-eight cents. 
That's $137 a ton. How many tons is that? Well, it's just short of 24 tons. So, is it a special salt? It's solar salt. Where does it come out of? Oklahoma. I mean, we may not use them up, but is there a way we can contract that too? Forward contract that. I mean, right now what we're looking at maybe three or four loads a year, maybe. maybe the, the, I think the engineers looked at maybe three loads. This this price here is good for 18 months. I mean, so. Right, but I mean, I didn't know whether we could forward contract or I don't know. you could prepay it or something like that. I mean, there'd be cost to savings to to look into. It. We're looking at using about 75 ton a year, correct? Could be, yes. I think that was kind of on the outside of what they, you know, they thought could be up to three loads a year. I'll make a motion to run purchase time. A second. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries five out. Anything right. else? That's all I have, thank you. Sanders? The only thing I have is there is going to be a lady coming this Friday and they are going to redo the ISO rating for St. John. So she'll be testing hydrants, going over fire trucks, and looking at all of our equipment that we have to fight fires. She'll be here at 1 o'clock and she said it'd probably take us probably between 3 to 4 hours to get it done. Everything up to stuff? Okay. Under old business, um, we have our financial planning, goal planning workshop coming up on December 7th, um, just a Saturday. Community room in the basement of the library from 8 to 12. I'm still looking for issues, concerns, ideas that you guys may have that we need to discuss. I'm also pulling information together with city staff at this point, so plan to have some numbers and different things that we can talk about and see where we want to go in the next three to five years. Is there any other old business? Thank you, Motion to adjourn. Second. Okay.